What is going on, good people of YouTube? I'm Jay Slay. Thank you so much for joining me, and wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day. Today we're playing some Madden 21, but before we get into it, if you enjoy the content, leave a like rating, and if you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button and turn the notification bell on to stay updated with all of my uploads. If you missed our previous video, I'll leave a link in the description of this video for you to go check it out, but in it, I bring you five budget cards that you need to consider adding to your Madden Ultimate Team. So for today's video, we have episode number four of the Atlanta Falcons rebuild. Now we are fresh off a disappointing season where we didn't make the playoffs. We were able to make the playoffs in season two. Season three, we weren't able to build off that. However, we do have a stronger roster this season. So I'm feeling pretty confident going into season number four. Now, real quick, click on the card in the top right-hand corner to go check out the playlist. You can see episode 1, 2, and 3. And if for no other reason, it makes chronological sense. Go do, so go do that and then jump right back over to here. But let's real quick, man, let's touch on the team. Let's see what we've got on offense and defense. It's a pretty solid squad. If they play up to their potential and what I feel like we could do, we could be looking for a playoff birth if not more right so let's just go through it so this offseason before we even talk about this season we're going to need to upgrade this offensive line we have done that albeit slightly right we still have jake matthews at left tackle he seems like he sits at a 79 overall to start the year he goes up to an 80 and then he's just regressing right back down to a 79 we really need to address this offensive line we try to do it in the draft this past year but there just wasn't that many prospects we were able to take right tackle jackson carmen we got him in a trade from the tampa bay buccaneers so he's going to be at the right tackle position chris lindstrom is up to a 78 overall if he can get that superstar development you'd like that because then he's going to progress a lot faster trey smith at the left guard position i really like him he's a solid player he just doesn't have that development trait right so we just need to get him to get that and i think that would help out right matt hennessy definitely the weakest member of the o-line Hopefully he can progress, but if not, we're going to be looking at offensive line this offseason, that's for sure. Dominic Darby, the tight end, played sod last year, had a little over 700 yards. He's going to be holding down the tight end. Anthony Ferkser is going to be our backup at that spot. Now let's come down to the skill positions. Justin Fields at quarterback is up to an 80 overall with superstar development. You like to see that. Hopefully he can carry this offense forward. Really, our... Main issue last season was our offense. We were, I believe, 6th or 8th in the league in yards allowed and points allowed on defense. But offensively, we were in the lower third, probably around 26th to 28th, man. It was not good. Justin Fields leading the helm. He's going to have to take this offense to the next level. Chubba Hubbard, this dude's going to have to step up as well, man. Now, we did draft Kai Holloway, who's a power running back. Dude was a sixth round grade. We took him in about the third round, and he had star or better development. Looking forward to seeing what he's got. If Chuba slips at the beginning of the year, we're going to look to get Kai Holloway in and get the touches to see if he can take this offense and really be that bell cow that we need, right? Wide receiver position. Really like this. Calvin Ridley, you'd like to see him at least get that superstar development so he can get an ability or two, but he has star right now, so that's good. Russell Gage. Jalen Waddle rounding out the most important wide receiver positions at the number two and number three slot. So this offense can be good. It should develop as we're in year number two with them, really, speaking of Justin Fields being at the helm. Um, you know, year four, obviously, in total, but Matt Ryan was in, within the first two years, right? So if the offense can take the next step, the defensive side of the ball should be uh, it should be solid should be outstanding again they were outstanding last year they should do that again this year our number one draft pick from last year Keelan Dent he's up to star development at an 82 overall you like to see that Grady Jarrett still holding down the middle of the defensive line we signed him to a two-year deal this past offseason so this is year one of that two-year deal he's towards the back end of his career so I don't know what we're going to do with him after that second year but right now we're looking for him to have another solid year Joseph Osai he was one of our first round picks in year number two's draft he's at superstar development you really love to see that and you want to see some more development from Marlon Davidson Hopefully, he can take that next step this season. Let's go ahead and take a look at the secondary. Caleb Farley, he's at superstar development. He just got another ability. He has tip drill, and he now has pick artist. So, 
man, we are expecting a lot out of this dude, man. Really excited from this corner out of Virginia Tech to carry our secondary, right? Darren Taylor was a pick that we had this past draft. He only has star development, but it was a good value pick. Hopefully, he's going to progress. We do have A.J. Terrell and Kendall Sheffield as well. So, A.J. Terrell is going to play on the outside when we have a nickel or dime packages. And Darren Taylor is going to slide into the slot, right? Keanu Neal, that hard-hitting strong safety playing in the box. He's at 87 overall, still superstar development. You like to see that. And then Paris Ford, you want to see him take that next step. He's still only at a 77 overall. I want to get him into the 80s for sure this season. We do have Kendall Sheffield as the backup free safety. We... Have a plethora of corners right now, right? And so we're going to throw him at the backup free safety to see what he can do there if he's going to see the field at all in that position, right? Not a linebacking core, man. Building off of last year, we still have the same linebacking core, but they all got superstar development, right? Deion Jones holding down the middle. Foye Luakon, one of the fastest linebackers in the game at the right outside linebacker position. Michael Walker, good run-stopping left outside linebacker. All have superstar development. I can't wait to see again. What this defense is going to do, they're going to have to carry our team. They're going to have to keep us in some games. And if our offense can pick it up, we could be pretty dangerous. Special teams, I, I, once again, I forget about this, right? We have Sam Sloman at kicker. I don't even know who that is. The game doesn't either because he just has the silhouette as his picture. And Sterling Hoffrichter at the punter, right? So our specialist, take a look at this. We kind of already went over it. It's a lot of the same names and, and faces that we've already seen at different positions there. And then our practice squad. The only thing I'm going to touch off on this is that uh, we've got a lot of names and we've got a lot of guys on the D-line. So unfortunately... Big Cat Bryant, who the main storyline around him is not whether or not he's on the team, but whether or not he gets to a 70 overall before this rebuild is done. He's still in the squad, but he's on the practice squad. I don't think we're going to be in fear of anybody signing him off our practice squad, but that's just something to take a look at right there. He's not on the team right now. We'll see if he's able to get in back into the lineup as we go. Okay. So the way this is going to work, we are going to sim four weeks at a time. The first week, because we have our bye week in week four, we're going to sim through the Jaguars game. We're going to pause there. We're going to look at the stats, kind of see where we are, assess the team. If we have any superstar or if we have any development trait upgrade opportunities, we will be hopping in on those. But we're going to sim through this season, and hopefully we're going to be talking about a playoff berth once we get through the end. So without further ado, I will see you guys after the week five game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, so five weeks into the season, we are currently two and two in the bottom of the NFC South, but still a long season left to go. We're only two games back of the win column, one game back in the loss column. Really liking our chances so far. We're about to already have our second game already against the Saints. We lost the first game. Let's go ahead and look at the schedule here. We lost the first game, unfortunately. It was a pretty close game, if I remember correctly. Uh, we were able to win against the Rams. We lost against the Titans. We lost by three against the Saints. It was at home, so now we're going to actually have to go on the road and beat the Saints. Not an easy task, that's for sure. But we did bounce back at home against the Jaguars. Rolled them up 42-21. to So, let's go ahead now. Let's take a look at the stats it looks like a mixed bag so far. Defensively, we look like we've been okay, just judging by the score. Offensively, so we're a little better this year. 21st in the NFL through the first four games. Fourth in the NFL in defense. You really love to see that. We've scored 119 points, so while we're not necessarily moving the ball that well, we are scoring points, so you definitely like to see that. That was inflated by the last game against the Jaguars, right? So let's go ahead. Let's take a look here at the individual statistics. 13 touchdowns to 4 picks, man. You like to see that from Justin Fields. Almost 1,200 yards already. He's starting to take that next step. Maybe by the next you know, half of the season, he's really going to come into his own. I like to see that a lot. Chubba Hubbard, 65 carries, 245 yards, 3.8 yards per carry. Okay, that's much better. As you guys know from those last two episodes, Chubba Hubbard was not holding his own at all. You like to see that Kai Holloway, though. He's making things a little difficult, right? If, if, if Chubba slips, man, if the next time after we send four more games, he's down to like 3.3, 3.4 yards per carry, I might just go ahead and throw Kai Holloway in there just as a starting running back just to see what happens, right? Take a look at receivers. So Calvin Ridley, I don't know why. He must have had four touchdowns this past game. He was unhappy with the game plan going into the Jaguars game. Dude's got 18 catches for 312 yards and six touchdowns. No way he can be unhappy now, right? 
Russell Gage, 23 for 272 and two tutties. Jalen Waddle, 15 for 185 and two tutties. Dominic Darby not having the best season so far. Chubba Hubbard in the receiving game is looking pretty solid. So you'd like to see Jalen Waddle step it up a little bit more. That's hopefully going to, as Justin Fields continues to progress, which it looks like he is, going to help Jalen Waddle's game as well. Deion Jones leading the team with 31 tackles. He does have one interception. Caleb Farley with 23. Foyer with 21. Let's take a look at the sack. Someone's got four. That's a good sign. Is that Keelan Dent? That's Joseph Osai. Keelan Dent with three and a half. So looking solid right there. Osai averaging a sack a game. Dent averaging almost a sack a game. You got Grady coming in there with two sacks. AJ Terrell with a half a sack. So he and Keelan Dent looks like they combined for a half a sack. Do we have one interception? We have three. Okay, Deion Jones, Kendall Sheffield, who's not really seeing the field that And James Tuck, back up right end. We took him in the, I don't remember what round, but I believe it was two uh, drafts ago. Justin Tuck out here. James Tuck from Northern Illinois, not Notre Dame. One pick for him. I, who knows how that happened, right? Who knows? Okay, so two and two could be worse, right? Could be better. Could be worse. Sitting still at the 82 overall. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and upgrade these players. We're not going to re-sign any players, but the main guys we're going to be looking to re-sign this offseason uh, and probably this season is going to be Deion Jones, Michael Walker, Chris Lindstrom, and Marlon Davidson. We should be able to lock all of those guys up, no problem. Okay, Darren Taylor, let's upgrade his man-to-man -man traits. He's going to go up to a 78 overall. You like to see that. Some other guys that have gotten upgrades so far, Justin Fields, Jalen Waddle, Deion Jones, Grady Jarrett, just to name a few. Good to see Kai Holloway already getting his second upgrade so far. He got one in the preseason. Now he's getting another one already at 76 overall. You can see his power, um, his power halfback trait, getting those, getting the truck to go up some more. You like to see that. Corey Baker, this dude could be a low-key sleeper, man. This is his second upgrade already as well. He had one in the preseason also. He's up to a 72 overall, so he's low in the overall category. Uh, but he's got some decent stats. Caleb Farley already with his second upgrade. The first was in the preseason. That allowed him to go ahead and get that extra ability, that being pick artist. So now he's up to an 86 overall, man. This dude, I, I need to get some picks from you, Caleb. I need you to make some impact plays while we're on the field. That's the problem with the Falcons in general, man, is like... They've got good talent. They just don't make any plays when they need to. Now, they're starting to do that as we go forward through the season, and you hope that that continues on. They just got to have someone step up and make some impact plays. All right. So, four weeks in, five weeks in, four games in. We're 2-2. Two and two. We got the Saints, Bears, Colts, and Texans coming up in this next quarter of the season. I'll see you guys after that Texans game. <laughs> Big second quarter of the season, man. We go 4-0 and to get us to 6-2. and Now, the Panthers, they went 3-1, and right? They're sitting at 7-2. and But we got some ground on the Bucks and the Saints, right? We got a game against the Bucks coming here. Let's go ahead, man. Let's look at the schedule so you can see. We won these games pretty handedly for the most part. We'll come down here, come down to week 6. 38-24, rolled the Saints up in their building. Barely beat the Bears 21-18. We did beat the Colts 21-14. And then we rolled the Texans up at our place 38-17. So, man, that's a solid, solid quarter. I cannot wait to take a look at the stats here. I want to see, man, what does Justin Fields look like? Our offense obviously looks like they're starting to put some stuff together. And we're setting ourselves up, man, for a good little playoff run here. We are fourth in the NFL in offensive yards, man. That's what I'm talking about. Almost 3,300. Don't know what we're at. As far as defensive yards allowed, we've almost allowed 2,700. Sixth in points scored, so you like to see that. Scored 237 points. Eighth in points allowed. So you can give up all the yardage you want to, but if you're only allowing in the eighth, the top eight points allowed, that's that's obviously pretty solid. Still not going to tell us what we're at there. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the individual stats here. Justin Fields, he only threw five touchdowns over the last quarter, of the, the the next quarter of the season. Uh, he had 13 touchdowns and four picks, I believe, but he only threw one interception, so that's good. He was not turning the ball over. He's almost thrown for 2,400 yards, so you definitely like to see that. Let's take a look at the rushing stats. So Chubba Hubbard starting to put things together a little bit. His yards per carry is staying around 3.8, so you like to see that. Three touchdowns over the last quarter of the season to give him three total, so 135 carries, 514 yards. 
Kai Holloway looking like a pretty solid power running back. Six touchdowns already. You like to see that. Let's take a look at these receiving stats. Two more touchdowns from Calvin Ridley. Dude's averaging 90 yards a game. You like to see that. 46 catches, 721 yards. Russell Gage at the third wide receiver is uh, sitting at 42 catches, 571 yards and two touchdowns. Jalen Waddle, 356 yards, three touchdowns. Not having the best season. Hopefully, you know, he's still at a low, lower overall, obviously, compared to Calvin Ridley. Hopefully, he's going to continue to develop. Dominic Darby at the tight end spot. You know, you couldn't ask for, you know, much more from him. I mean, it would be nice to get some more production from him. But 344 yards, two touchdowns, that's not bad coming out of a tight end, right? Defensively, we had to score some defensive touchdowns, right? Only throwing five, uh, only five passing touchdowns. Looks like we had a few rushing touchdowns. Deion Jones looks like got him another pick. 56 tackles. To lead the team, Caleb Farley with 50 tackles, Foyer with 44, Darren Taylor with 40 there. Let's take a look at the sacks here. The second quarter of the season is in the sack department. We don't necessarily do too well, but this is, well, maybe maybe about the same, but Keelan Dent did really well. Keelan Dent had four sacks over the, over the last uh, four games, so you definitely like to see that. That gives him up to seven and a half. Grady Jarrett had a solid quarter, up to five sacks. Joseph Osai, not so solid, only a half a sack, but, you know, hopefully he's going to continue to get some pressure on the quarterback. Sacks don't tell the full story, right? Um, you know, if he's forcing pressures, that's obviously a good thing, too. Foyer with one sack, A.J. Terrell, Keanu Neal. Interceptions, it looks like we picked the ball off. It looks like we forced some turnovers. You definitely like to see that. As we mentioned, Dion's leading the team with two. We've got a number of guys. We've got a sea of guys that have one, uh, one interception. Michael Walker, Paris Ford, Caleb Farley, Keanu Neal. All right, cool. So you like to see that for sure. Let's come over and let's look at re-signing a couple of players. We're going to go ahead and take care of this right now so we don't have that looming over us as we go throughout the season. We've got enough cap room that the guys that we want to re-sign, we're probably just going to give them what they're asking for. So as you can see, we got almost $100 million cap to work with. Free agency has been a complete bomb for us, right? Even when we've got cap, dudes don't want to come here for whatever reason, uh, or we just skip past free agency altogether. My bad. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're going to go ahead and offer him... This contract here, I'm excited to sign such a great great offer and stay with the team. Brother, we are excited to have you back, man. Deion Jones is probably my favorite Falcon, to be honest with you. Not of all time, but favorite Falcon on the current roster. Got to get this guy signed as well. Michael Walker. I mean, that's a pretty solid offer for an outside linebacker that's got superstar development. I'm glad we got the deal done too, Michael. I am. Chris Lindstrom, we're going to be bringing him back. Only 26 years old. He's at a 79 overall. He's already got two upgrades uh, in this episode. Pretty, pretty solid offer there. Two years. That's exactly, yep, I, me too, brother. So two years, so we're going to have to, you know, catch him in a couple of years as well. Uh, finally, we're going to go ahead and see if we can lock up Marlon Davidson. He wants two years. That's just fine for me because he's a 17 overall. If he doesn't progress in those next two years, we could definitely look to part ways with him. But we're still sitting at a little over probably 75 mil in cap room uh, going into the offseason. So you like to see that. Most of the others guys here, Matt Hennessy, probably not. You know, we'll probably re-sign Sterling Hoffrichter. But most of the other guys here, we're not really going to look to bring back. So we're going to have a lot of cap going into the offseason here. And we've brought back some impact players on our team. Probably going to be moving on from Jake Matthews. Once again, the tackle position, really the O-line position in general, is not super strong in this draft. It's a bit unfortunate. Maybe there'll be someone in free agency, right? Let's come down here. We'll upgrade some players, see who's got upgrades. Michael Walker is going to get an upgrade here. We'll go ahead and get him up to an 80 overall. You like to see that. Five more overalls. I mean, probably not going to get that in this episode, but five more overalls. He's going to get another trait. Plus three on block shedding. You like to see that, especially when it comes to run stopping. Kai Holloway already with his third upgrade of the episode. Man, you like to see that. Chubba is, uh, now that we gave him some competition, it looks like he's starting to play a little bit. But uh, Kai Holloway. Obviously, have high expectations for him. And then Caleb Farley. This is already his third upgrade of the episode as well. Dude is a monster. He's just got to start getting some picks, man. He's got to start getting some stats to back up his overall. But I'm not really super concerned with that, especially with the way that we're playing right now. So you like to see some of those upgrades right there. All right, cool. We'll go ahead and upgrade all the players. Now we got four more games to get into. We're going to be at home against the Bucks, on the road against the Panthers. 
on the road against the football team and then at home against the Bucks as well. That Panthers game, that's going to be a pretty solid game right there. But, man, we need to have a strong next third quarter of the season. I'll catch you guys after that Tampa Bay Buccaneers game in Week 13. Okay, we're going to be hopping into this Carolina Panthers game because we have the opportunity to upgrade Deion Jones to Superstar X Factor if we are able to hold the Panthers to less than 150 yards or getting Deion Jones either three interceptions, forced fumbles, tackles for losses, or sacks. So without further ado, man, let's jump right into this. Okay, so I should mention that similar to when we jumped in a couple episodes ago to try and upgrade Russell Gage's development trait, we are only going to be playing the defensive snaps here, like we played the only played the offensive snaps, just to kind of keep the theme of the simulation aspect of it, right? Shed. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. What a what a what a terrible start. What a terrible start. That's definitely not a tackle for loss. I don't think that um, 40 yards down the field constitutes a tackle for loss, unfortunately. Oh my goodness. Oh my lord. I've never seen that before. Run, Michael. Get into the end zone, brother. Christian McCaffrey's trucking. Yo, I've never seen that before. I thought that was literally going to be a sack. I'm kind of disappointed because that would have been a sack for Deion Jones. But Michael Walker just somehow the ball just materialized into his body. Oh, no, it didn't. He actually made the play. What a heck of a play by Michael Walker. Yeah, maybe we should be upgrading to Michael Walker's development trait. We give up a 40-yard play right off the bat. And then we go, oh man, we get a, a pick six from Michael Walker. Good stuff. All right. Let's back them up. There it is. Let's go. That definitely guarantees us. Superstar X Factor on Deion Jones, man. You like to see it. Five tackles, three sacks. The stats are going to be super inflated, but... Uh, we had to do what we had to do, right? Let's go ahead and super sim to the rest for the rest of the game. We are going to jump forward to the end of the game. Let's hope we don't blow it, man. This is a huge game. 24-13. Defense has played phenomenal throughout the whole game. 27-13. 34-13. You got to think that that's got to be game, right? I mean, I know we tend to blow leads, but yep. Not in franchise mode, we don't. Good stuff, man. Matt Rule looking disappointed there. He's already getting some gray hair in the back of his head. 34-20. Two possession win. You like to see that. Okay, cool. Deion Jones is going to have superstar X Factor. That is super valuable. Okay, so a little bit of a mixed bag during the third quarter of the season. We went 2-2. Two and two. We did manage to come away with that victory against the Panthers. As you saw, we also got Deion Jones upgraded to superstar X Factor. And the Panthers, they went 0-3 during that quarter. So, But the Bucks and the Saints, they're sitting at 6-6, six and six, right? So we're one game up on the Panthers. We should have the tiebreaker because of the victory that we had a couple of games ago against them. And then we're two games up on the Bucks. And the Saints, right? So we split with the Bucks. We split with the Saints. We literally split with everybody so far. We have an opportunity to sweep the Panthers here coming up in Week 14. Let's go ahead. Go ahead here. Let's look at the schedule. Show you exactly what happened over the third quarter of the season, starting with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We rolled them up, man. 45 to 24. They couldn't stop us, obviously. 34-20, to you saw part of that victory against the Panthers. And then we went on the losing streak against the football team, 21-17. to The offense has sputtered the last couple weeks. 20-14 to against the Bucks, right? So defensively, it looks like we're still playing pretty well. <sighs> offensively, though, just started to kind of slow down some. So we're closing it out here at home against the Panthers, home against the Lions, and then we're going on the road at the Vikings and at the Panthers. You can see... In the last episode, remember, we had four away games back to back to back to back. Got three away games here and in two away games in the season. So, schedule makers, man, Raheem Morris, he must have something on him. I don't know what, but nonetheless, they just don't like us very much, it seems. So, we got to overcome that, though, right? So, let's back out. Let's take a look at the stats. We're sitting pretty right now as far as the playoff picture goes. So that is good to see. We are fourth in the NFL in, in yards. That is a huge turnaround from last season. We were in the bottom 
four in yards. Defensively, 10th in yards allowed. We're fifth in points scored. Don't know now what we are in points allowed. It's just weird how it does that. Last time, we didn't know where we were in yardage allowed. Justin Fields, what a phenomenal season. Dude has not thrown a pick since probably way back in like week four or week five. Wild stuff there, man. He's almost at 3,500 yards, 22 touchdowns, five interceptions from the third-year player. You like to see that. Chubba Hubbard has been right at 3.8 yards per carry the whole season. Kai Holloway has 11 touchdowns. The yards per carry is not there, uh, but 11 touchdowns, you cannot scoff at that. Almost 800 yards for Chubba. He's on track for 1,000. You like to see that. Receiving stats. There we go. Look at Russell Gage almost catching up to Calvin Ridley here. Both of them on pace for well over 1,000 yards. Calvin Ridley with 61 catches, leading the team with 9 touchdowns. Gage with 2. Dominic Darby stepped up his play, 52 catches for 586 yards, 3 touchdowns. And then Jalen Waddle with 542 yards and 3 touchdowns. Defensively, these are going to be a little inflated from the Carolina Panthers game. As you can see, Deion Jones could get Defensive Player of the Year. I said that last episode, and he didn't, unfortunately. Uh, but he's got 91 10. Tackles, five and a half sacks, and three interceptions. Darren Taylor has 71 tackles. Caleb Farley has 65. And then Foyer rounding it out with 56 for the top four. Quarterback sacks. Where are we looking like here? Keelan Dent, finally. We have a guy with over 10 sacks. And Keelan Dent still with four games to go as 10 and a half. Joseph Osai with seven and a half. Grady Jarrett has six. Deion Jones has five and a half. Nick Campbell had his entire season in the Carolina Panthers game. 21 tackles and three sacks. Foyer with two. James Tuck, low-key defensive player of the year, man. Five tackles, two sacks, and one interception. This dude's filling up the stat sheet, man. He's like, uh, he's like James Harden. He's like Russell Westbrook, right? LeBron James out here. Interceptions. I don't even watch basketball. I don't know why I'm making those references. Three for Dion. Michael Walker had that huge pick six in the Panthers game. Two for him. Nick Campbell has one. Foyer with one. A bunch of dudes, a vat of people, have one interception. You'd like to see some of our secondary members go ahead and get to double, well, at least two interceptions, right? Maybe not double digits. Let's slow down there. Okay, cool. So... Let's go ahead and upgrade some players. We've already signed everybody that we wanted to sign during this episode, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and upgrade some players. Still a little unsure about this draft class, to be honest with you. It's going to be it's gonna be pretty wild, pretty interesting. Let's go ahead. Marlon Davidson getting his second upgrade of the episode. You like to see that going up in block shedding. That's good to see. Uh, we'll upgrade Corey Baker. This is his third upgrade of the episode. So I said it low-key, man. This guy could be a sleeper. And he's already up to a 74 overall. I mean, who knows if he gets that development up tra upgrade trait where he's going to sit. Our D-line's pretty strong right now, but we'll have to see. Okay, so we got a huge game right here against the Panthers. The division could be on the line, but then we, we close it out, man, against the NFC North. Home against the Lions, at the Vikings, at the Packers. I'm hoping when I see you guys after Week 17, we're going to be either in a wild card playoff game or maybe we get that first round bye. I'll catch you guys after that Packers game. Okay, a couple things. No, we did not win the division, but we are back in the playoffs. We have a wild card playoff matchup against the Seattle Seahawks. We are 10 and 6 for the second time in 3 years. So you like to see that? Let's see how the season ended the last quarter of the season. I don't want to look at the playoff schedule schedule football teams in here at the Cowboys Falcons at the Seahawks Bucks at the Vikings the Vikings did beat us actually in week 16 so let's come to the regular season we're gonna scroll all the way down come 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 there we go Panthers 21 to 14 a loss unfortunately that could have meant the division they ended up 11 and 5 we ended up 10 and 6 that was the division right there unfortunately Got a big bounce back win against the Lions, 35 to 19. Lost 35 to 32 against the Vikings. The defense didn't decide to come to play, but we held our own. We held out at the Packers in Week 17 to go to the playoffs. If we lost this game, most likely we weren't going to make it because Green Bay was sitting at eight and seven. We were sitting at nine and six. I believe the winner of that game would have decided who would have gone on. Big big W there, 34 to 31. Okay, now that the season's over, let's go ahead and take a look at the season ending stats and then we'll take a look at some of the awards also 
Sixth in offense, man. You love to see that. You hope that's going to carry over into the coming seasons. 13th in defense, so we slipped a little bit. We're 6th in points scored with 462. Points allowed, we're 7th. So while our defense did slip down some, we're still in the top 10 with points allowed. You like to see that. Looks like a solid year from Justin Fields. Dude literally threw, it looks like, one interception all season after like week 5. So you love to see that. Almost 4,400 yards in the second year as him being our starting quarterback. And Chubba Hubbard just fell short of 1,000 yards. But it's a better season from him. 258 carries, almost 1,000 yards, 7 touchdowns. Boy, look at the rushing touchdowns. We had 30 rushing touchdowns as a team. Is that 30? Is my math? Can I do math? 21 plus 7 is 28 plus 2 is 30. Look at me get it right on the first try. Justin Fields had 7 rushing touchdowns. Yo, low-key, man, Justin Fields could be in the running for Offensive Player of the Year with these kind of numbers that he's put up. Probably not, but we'll see. Kai Holloway with 14 touchdowns, so you like to see that. The wide receiver position, Russell Gage did not finish with 1,000 yards. You don't like to see that. Look at the year Dominic Darby put together, though. I feel like at the halfway point, this guy was sitting around 350 yards. He ended up with 857 yards and five touchdowns. Ridley did go over 1,000 with 10 touchdowns. Man, dude's balling out. Maybe he's going to get that superstar development trait. And Jalen Waddle came on. Looks like the second half of the season, he did have 741 yards. Defensively, we should be pretty solid here. 119 tackles, 5.5 sacks, 4 interceptions from Deion Jones. What a year from the guy. What a year from the middle linebacker. You love to see that. Caleb Farley with 95 tackles. Foyer with 88. Dude had almost 30 tackles over the last 4 games. Darren Taylor with 87. Sacks. Looks like we had two guys that had over 10 sacks. You like to see that. And 14 and a half from Keelan Dent. What a first round pick this guy turned out to be two years ago. Drafted him as a linebacker. We kicked him down to play left in. And man, he's balling out with 14 and a half sacks. Got to the double digit mark for Joseph Osai as well. You like to see that. Grady Jarrett coming in with seven. Dion with five and a half. Interceptions, we already know Dion's probably going to be leading the team with four. Michael Walker with two. Darren Taylor, the rookie, with two. He was the only one in our secondary that had more than one interception. But it looks like our defense, for the most part, over the course of the entire season, played really well. Okay, did we win any awards? I hope we did. MVP is Jim Sears. I don't know who that guy is. I'm assuming he's a quarterback, probably a rookie. Jim Sears. Trey Lance finishes second. I believe he won it last year or finished right in the top two or three on a 7-9 Jets team. How does that happen? Justin Fields finishes third. So look at the look at the new blood coming in. Jim Sears, who knows? And then Trey Lance and Justin Fields. Solid stuff there. Derek Carr and Lamar Jackson rounding it out. Who won coach of the year? Griffin Murphy. All right. Big Grifster. Winning the old Coach of the Year ski. Offensive Player of the Year. I called it. I called that. Justin Fields. Offensive Player of the Year. Number one, Zeke right behind him. Clifford the Big Red Dog at number three. Defensive Player of the Year, Deion Jones. Look, we got Offensive and Defensive Player of the Year, man. Heck yeah. You like to see that. Deion Jones up to a 92 overall. Anybody else down there? Not on our team. Offensive Rookie of the Year, the Big Red Dog, E. Clifford, Eddie Clifford, and Kai Holloway's right there as well with 14 touchdowns. Maybe if we'd have started him, he'd have been better. Darren Taylor finishes second in Rookie of the Year. That's Defensive Rookie of the Year. That's unfortunate. The best quarterback was Aaron Rodgers. The best running back was Ezekiel Elliott. The best wide receiver was Devontae Adams with Calvin Ridley down there at number five. Where was Justin Fields, who won Offensive Player of the Year, but didn't manage to win Best Quarterback. Go figure. He's down at number five there. I just don't understand. Best wide receiver we saw was Devontae Adams. Best O-lineman was Zach Martin. Did we have anybody there? I'm just curious. Just curious. And we did not. Best defensive lineman, Aaron Donald, with Keelan Dent right there at number two, man. You like to see that. Joseph Osai down there at number eight as well. Best linebacker is not Deion Jones, even though he won Defensive Player of the Year. Once again, you don't understand it. Can't really try to either. Khalil Mack wins that. Uh, Michael Walker, Foyer anywhere in there? Probably not. Yeah, they're not. Best DB goes to Casey Hayward, who is now on the Cowboys. What's that guy's name? Bless Swan, Austin? Bless Swan? It's an interesting name. Best kicker, Sam Sloman, by the way. He's down there at number eight. 
I checked his stats before the final game. He went six of seven on field goal attempts. Our starting kicker went six of seven. He attempted seven field goals the whole year. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Maybe it's a good thing considering we're 10 and six and we're in the playoffs. So that means our offense is scoring in the red zone. He was 54 of 54 for extra points. So, I mean, I'm sure that went up, obviously, because we scored 34 points in the last game of the year. But I just thought that was an odd stat. Okay. So we're not going to be cutting here. We're going to be going back over. We're going to be upgrading some players here right before the game. Got some big upgrades here. Jalen Waddle is going to get an upgrade. This is like his fourth. I've been trying to get him to 85 overall, and we will. And he should get another ability, I believe, unless he has two already. No, he does get another ability slot. Perfect. What's that ability going to be? We're going to have to find out afterwards because I accidentally hit back. So we'll find out in a second. Keelan Dent. Dude's playing up with morale to 84 overall. Let's go ahead and upgrade his power rusher traits. And plus three on tackle, plus three on power moves. This dude's an absolute baller, man. What a beast. All right, Justin Fields. He's at an 84. He's going to go up to an 86 overall. He's playing up plus three with morale. Good stuff there. Joseph Osai getting an upgrade. These are good upgrades going into the playoffs, man. We are at the Seahawks. We're going to be going into Seattle. The 12th man's going to be roaring digitally. No, they're going to actually be in the stadium. Michael Walker getting an upgrade. He's going to go up to an 81 overall. Dominic Darby getting an upgrade as well. So Dominic Darby, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he got star development. Let's go over here and look. Yes, Dominic Darby, our tight end, our starting tight end, where we were really wanting to have someone step up and take that next step. Dominic Darby is going to be doing that for us with star development at 80, 80 overall. You like to see that. Keanu Neal coming in at an 88 overall. I'm going to upgrade his zone trait. He's going to go up to an 89 overall. You'd like to see him playing up with morale. Maybe that would have gotten him another ability slot. But nonetheless, his zone coverage is going to go up. You like to see that from the superstar. He's sitting at 89 zone coverage right now. That's that's pretty good. We'll let CPU handle Mark Marcus Callaway. All right, we're at the Seahawks, man. What a, what? A, oh, we need to take a look at his ability. I'm glad the I'm glad it, it it told me about that. Short out elite. So, you know, maybe not bad from the slot receivers. This ability can catch more consistent consistently while catching passes less than 10 yards from the line of scrimmage outside the numbers. He also has evasive. We already knew that. Okay, cool. Good stuff. Not the best abilities for a wide receiver, but with him only being 85 overall, you can't really expect it. All right. Let's go ahead and advance. Hopefully, we're going to see another team pop up in the division race. In the division playoffs. That means we'll have won this game. We did 35 to nothing, and we've got a date with the Carolina Panthers. We just, we just rolled right through the Seattle Seahawks. 30, 35 to nothing. Offensively, we were clicking defensively we were clicking what a game and now we've got the Carolina Panthers a division game in the division while in the division series it's about to say division wild card and that would have made any sense division game in the division series it seems fitting we've got some more upgrades here let's go ahead and make them good to see Trey Smith's up to an 80 overall is he still at normal development I would assume so Unfortunately, yeah, he is. Caleb Farley with an upgrade, though. You'd definitely like to see that from our number one corner. And um, let's go ahead and upgrade his man-to-man -man trait again. So that's good. He's up to an 88 overall, man. Can't ask much more than that. Oh, man, we've got an opportunity to go to the division. I'm sorry, to go to the conference championship. NFC conference championship berth is on the line right here. Carolina Panthers, division opponent, can we win? <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> we won 35 to nothing, and then we lose 52 to 6. What in the world happened? What a collapse. What a collapse. I mean, you got to be happy with the season, though. We got back to the playoffs, put together another 10 and 6 year. <sighs> that division, that division round is just, it's it's our kryptonite, man. It is our kryptonite. Chubba Hubbard's gonna get another ability. Let's take a look and see what that is before we 
fast forward here. Reach for it. It's a useless ability because literally everybody, I'm serious, every single player in the game, whether you're a defensive lineman or a kicker, has, or a running back in this case, has reach for it, man. It's a useless ability. If you get close to the marker, whether it's a first down marker or the end zone, they're going to reach for it. I promise you. And it, I don't really see it being effective anymore. But whatever. He gets that ability. That's fine. Joseph Osai is going to be up to an 84 overall. Probably going to go back down to an 83 overall, though, because he's playing up with morale. And he's probably not going to be playing up with morale. Man on the practice squad. Big Cat Bryant. We went all episode without seeing him. He's getting an upgrade here. We're going to upgrade his power rusher trait. He's going to go up to a 68 overall. I'm telling you, before this rebuild is over, dude's going to be at a 70 overall. I can promise you that. Maybe he'll make the team next year. Who knows? All right. This dude's got three upgrades. We're going to let the uh, CPU, if it wants to, upgrade the rest of them. All right, cool. All right. We're going to go ahead and sim pass. It doesn't matter who wins the Super Bowl. We're going to go ahead and sim pass, and I'll catch you once free agency starts. Okay, so we are here at the start of free agency. Let's go ahead and jump in, see what free agents are available. Hopefully, there's some O-linemen. We did re-sign Matt Hennessy just in the event that there's no O-linemen that we can sign because, like I said, this draft class is a bit of a mixed bag. We'll have to see how it is. Now, Stefan Diggs, dude's 30 years old, but he's coming in at a 98 overall. Golly. Fletcher Cox is here, 33 overall. We don't want him. OBJ at a 91 overall. I mean, we don't need any wide receivers, right? I mean, we just don't. We don't really need anybody on the defensive line either. I'm not seeing any O-linemen here at all. Rodney Hudson, who was here last year, is now a year older, and he's actually down to star development. I mean, just like last year. We don't need a, we don't need a 35 overall center. Austin Eckler is 29. I mean, DeAndre Swift, but our running back situation is looking a lot better. Darius Slay is down to normal development. I think that's a change with the recent patch is that players are now going to regress and their development trait is going to regress with it. So I actually think it's pretty good. Pretty good change. Deontay Harris at a star development, 26 years old. Preston Wilson, 27, same. Jalen Rager. But we don't really need a wide receiver, right? Deshaun Hand, Sterling Shaw. I mean, there's just no O lineman. I mean, there's literally none. Jacob Phillip, but I see we don't need linebackers. Isaiah Simmons is here. Okay. Keanu Neal's 29, so he's three years younger. He's also significantly less overall, but if he does develop, I mean, maybe we switch him over to the free safety position. Or maybe we move him down to linebacker. I mean, we don't really need linebackers. I'm going to offer Isaiah Simmons a contract nonetheless, just because I don't think I've brought any free agents in. We're four episodes in. I don't think I've brought any free agents in. So we're at 102 points right now, which is going to put us first. All right. We've been first before, and uh, dudes have rejected our contract. So let's hope he doesn't do that. We don't need corners. We don't need a tight end. I mean, we, we, listen. This is, I think, a testament to how we have built this team because we don't really have a lot of holes. We don't really have a lot of needs. We just need some guys to develop. But, I mean, look, there's just no O-lineman. Who's, who's the best tackle? <laughs> the guy that was on our team. Who's the best guard? Quentin Spain. We don't want him. Rodney Hudson. Weston Richburg. He's 33. Lloyd Cushenberry, who is 73. I'd rather have Matt Hennessy. Kevin Zeitler, who's 34. Jonah Jackson. 6'4", 306. Could he play tackle? Maybe. Could Trey Smith play tackle and him slide to left guard? Alex Kappa, who's 29, it's too old here. We're going to we're gonna make Jonah Jackson an offer here. He's only 26. Uh, let's give him a little bit more signing bonus and a little bit more salary. And let's see what he feels like there. This dude looks just like Jackson Carmen, so it's going to be hard to differentiate them while they're on the team. That was in the game. That had nothing to do with my recording software, so I'm not worried, even though I'm kind of worried, but I'm not worried. Jonah Jackson. Can we get the first? Yes, we are finally first. All right, and then any right tackles? We already know the answer is no. Jawan James, Isaiah Wilson at 74 overall. Just just no O-lineman, man. All right, well, let's simulate. Those are the only two that we're going to look to bring in. If we can't get them, we can't get them, and that's four episodes where we haven't been able to bring any free agents in. Let's go ahead and advance to stage two. Oh, well, okay, Isaiah Simmons accepted, so that's really good. Jonah Jackson declines, which is a bit unfortunate, but 
I mean, what can you do, man? Like, what can you do? At least we, at least we got Isaiah Simmons in, and now we've got a wild card, a utility guy that we can use. We can kind of move him around as we need to, right? So that's obviously a good thing. If Paris Ford, maybe we switch him over to free safety, start him, and just see what happens. Although our defense is just playing too good. I mean, we really don't even know if you want to break up that continuity, right? Okay, so I'm going to cut it here, and we are going to simulate until we get to the 2024 NFL Draft. Okay, free agency is over. We are heading into the 2024 NFL Draft. This is going to be an interesting draft, to say the least. The needs that we have, literally, they're just not there. And, and maybe we can end up getting something. Let's go ahead and pause. Maybe we can end up getting something of value later on in the draft. I feel like we can definitely do that. But, I mean, we just, I, there's no reason for us to move up. At best, I mean, really, honestly, what we should or could do at 25 is move back. I mean, we'll see what's there. There's some good defensive prospects, but we don't need anybody on defense, right? Let's go ahead and skip ahead. We're going to advance to our next pick. Once we get to the 25th pick, um, that advance to the next pick or our next pick. I advance to the next pick. We're going to advance to the next user pick. Look at this dude right here, though, man. Landon Little at middle linebacker. I mean, I'm going to pick him. I don't even need a linebacker, but maybe we switch to 3-4. I mean, who knows? But, I mean, look at the combine. Look at his top skills. I'm picking Landon Little. It's got to be the number one overall player, right? He has hidden development, which is good. Okay, 17th. Uh, we took him at 25. So, I mean, it's a solid pick. He's got hidden development. He's a 73 overall. Going to look to develop him. Deion Jones is 29, right? So, we are going to need in this rebuild, right? We're going to need someone to replace Deion Jones eventually. That's going to be Landon Little right here. So, I think that's a pretty solid pick. We're going to go ahead, though. We're going to skip to round two and most likely take one of those centers. It looks like that Edward Scott is going to be the move here. It looks like he has the best grade, and he also has the best top skills. Let's draft him. Let's see. Did we make a good selection? We did. He's ranked 16th. He's actually ranked better than uh, Landon Little that we took. Uh, he's 73 overall. He only has normal developments. So that's a bit of a downer, but what we're probably going to do here is slide him from center or Matt Hennessy from center to play guard, and then we're going to put Trey Smith at the left tackle position because we do have a hold, a hole at left tackle. This O-line is just not coming together because the prospects aren't there. The free agents aren't Aren't there it's a bit of a bummer but we have to work with what we can work with right so we're gonna go ahead and advance we picked third uh, we picked 25th in the third round so David Woodard was projected in the seventh round I'm gonna take Tyrell page here with the hopes that David Woodard is gonna be there next round could be a risk it's a risk that I'm going to take though Tyrell Page has normal development. It is a good pick. He is ranked 32, 32nd in true value. We drafted him at 89. So we've literally drafted three players that had uh, talent that would have allowed them to go in the, the first round. So you can't argue with that. Hopefully this guy develops. He's only a 71 overall. Normal development is a bit of a downer. And we don't pick again until the fifth round. So that's something I did not account for. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and advance to our next user pick. David Woodard is there. This was the guy that we were looking at all along. So that is an easy decision right there. 72 overall. Normal development. He is ranked 27th in true value. We draft him at 153. We've had four picks. All four have been ranked in the top 32 at true value. Listen, I'm not saying I'm a god at drafting, but I've done pretty darn well. And I'm not... I, that was my weakest point coming into this I'm not I haven't been a very good drafter in the past however I've started to kind of pick up on what to look for and uh hey I think we've done pretty well I think we've done pretty well we're gonna pick 25th in the sixth round have no clue what we're gonna take maybe we look to trade this pick and uh let's just review some offers that we get hopefully something for the uh, next year yeah 2025 at that that looks perfect right that fourth uh, right there for next season looks perfect. We'll go ahead and take that from the New Orleans Saints. They are helping us out and they don't even know it. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to skip to our next user pick, which will be the last pick for us. It'll be the 25th pick in the seventh round. Let's just go ahead and take Roman Abbott here. Why not, right? I mean, A minus hit power, A minus pursuit, B tackle, decent combine. Let's see what we get. 
66 overall with with star or better development you love to see it man you love to see it Roman is ranked 153rd in true value, and we drafted him at 217, but my guy's got star or better development. Whoo, what a, what a draft. That might be the best draft that we've had so far, and that's saying something because that first year draft where we got Justin Fields, Caleb Farley, and Jalen Waddle, that was something else, but these are players that we don't know, and we literally just got value at every single pick that we made. I love it, man. I love to see it. We're going to advance to the end of the draft. I'm going to meet you guys at the team screen where we're going to go over the team that we're going to have going into the 2024 season. Okay, so we are here at the offense. Now, first thing that you'll notice here, regression is definitely a thing now when it comes to the superstars, the X-Factors. Jalen Waddle does not have superstar X-Factor anymore. He only has Superstar, so it's not a huge downgrade, but he's not going to get that XP as fast, right? So we're going to see on the defensive side of the ball, we've had a couple casualties of that as well. But let's start with the O-line. Chris Lindstrom, same thing. He does not have star development anymore. We have normal development on the entire O-line. This has been the problem for this entire rebuild. He's trying to figure out this offensive line. Now we've slid Trey Smith over to left tackle. Our draft pick, draft pick here, Edward Scott, he's playing left guard. We drafted him as a center, but he did go up in overall from a 73 to a 75. Matt Hennessy, it's a good thing we signed him because he's still our starting center. There just wasn't anybody any better. Chris Lindstrom, down to that normal development. You hate to see that. He's at a 79 overall. Jackson Carmen at a 79 overall, still with normal development. Dominic Darby does have star development now. That is very good going into this next season. He is at a 79 overall. Come down to the skill positions. Justin Fields still has superstar. He's up to an 84 overall. Need him to continue to take that next step. Chubba Hubbard's at an 85, still a superstar. Kai Holloway had star development. So you like to see that as our second running back. Also our fullback. He is our power running back as well. That's why he got 14 touchdowns last year. Calvin Ridley still with star developments at 88 overall. Jalen Wall is at an 85 overall. And then Russell Gage is down from superstar to star. He's at an 84 overall, so you don't like to see that. But hopefully that's not really going to affect us in the long run in this next season. Let's come over to the defense, defensive side of the ball. We still look nasty, but we're not as nasty. At the linebacking core, Foye Luakon and Michael Walker both lost superstar. They are down to star. Now, Deion Jones still has superstar X-Factor. He is holding down our linebacking core at 93 overall. But our draft picks, Landon Little and Raheem Abbott, I believe is his name, they both have star or better development. So, depending on what happens with these two going forward, it's a good thing that we drafted these linebackers, to be honest with you, because uh, we're going to need to continue to bring in talent at these positions because of the regression with the traits, right? Let's come down to the defensive line. Joseph Osai still has superstar. Grady Jarrett still has superstar. Marlon Davidson does still have star. I thought he would probably drop down to normal, but he still has star. And Keelan Dent, I'd have liked to see him get, what, 14 and a half sacks? Go up to superstar. But we're looking strong across the D-line. We're looking strong at linebacker. We're looking strong in the secondary. Caleb Farley, superstar, 88 overall. A.J. Terrell is going to be our starting CB number two. Darren Taylor didn't really develop like we wanted to. Hopefully that'll change this season. And then Kendall Sheffield is going to be our fourth corner. Keanu Neal and Isaiah Simmons at strong safety. You'll see Isaiah Simmons. He's all over. He's our backup strong. He's our backup free. He's actually going to play slot corner when we have nickel packages and dime packages out there. So I'm going to try to get this dude on the field. I'm going to see what he can do. Paris Ford at star development. He's at an 80 overall. He's got the better coverage stats of them. Uh, Keanu Neal has the best coverage stats of all the safeties. He's at an 89 overall. So you like to see that defensively we were, we look really really good special teams i signed tucker mccann let's hope that the last name of the best kicker in the nfl justin tucker translates over to this guy's first name as far as how he plays as a kicker because this dude had 94 kick power so he's at a 68 overall who cares sterling hoffert is still our punter and let's take a look at the specialists here so as you can see isaiah simmons we're going to start at slot cornerback with him see how he looks there Keelan Dent, Grady Jarrett, Marlon Davis, Joseph Osai, nothing different there. Sub linebacker, Deion Jones and Isaiah Simmons. Jalen Waddell in the slot. Chubba Hubbard and Kai Holloway rounding out the running backs. Third down and power running back, respectively. So that's going to be the team heading in to 
year number five where we are going to look to get back to the playoffs we're going to look to get to the super bowl and win a super bowl i want to have one before this rebuild is done i don't know when it's going to be done but i want to have one before it is okay my face cam went out for a second but we're back to close the video out 86 overall total for the team 85 offense 88 defense that's the highest it's been so far man we're looking good going into this next season i hope you did enjoy this video if you did leave a like rating if you have a comment something i should improve on something that you like or if you just want to say what's up man leave me a comment in the comment section down below i love interacting with each and every one of you down there and if you'd like to see more content hit the subscribe button and turn the notification bell on to stay updated with all of my uploads i'm jay slay i'm signing out today i'll catch you all on my next video